It's a marshmallow world, people. Ed, soft, squashy delicacy bud here. Like them or loathe them, squashy stacked shoes may help bring people back from a long-term injury or assist in the recovery process after a long, grueling marathon training block or race. Today, I take a sleigh ride through the most marshmallow-like shoes in my collection. Hey cats, welcome back to the channel. You tuning in is always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. And it really helps the channel out too if you give this video a like, but also share it with your running buddies. And you could pick up some merchandise from the links below as well, just in time for Christmas. You know it makes sense. The shoes I've picked in my selection today provide the runner with a huge amount of cushion to help out with those aching joints, perhaps to recover from injury. As you know, my shoulder was fractured recently, but also to get out perhaps on those more taxing days with relative ease. I say relative ease because a lot of it's actually in the mind, isn't it really? Let me know what your comfort blanket running shoe recommendations are down in the comments. First up, it's got to be the ASICS Nova Blast 2. I've lost track of how many viewers have suggested that the Nova Blast has allowed them to get back out running once again after injury. A lot of people say they've got some nagging issues in their joints, or even to just begin running again after years perhaps of being out. Flight Foam Blast is exceptionally compressive and very easy on the knees for some people. There is an if though, and it's a big one. I think you need some reasonably good ankle strength to run in these shoes. I've heard a lot of people complaining about them. I think you need a neutral foot strike, anything other than that, and it could spell even more problems. I think the slight changes that ASICS made in this second version of the shoe solved a lot of issues for me, certainly. Overall, a more stable underfoot feel in the second iteration, although I'd still advise against using this one if you land on the outside edge Edge of your foot at the lateral side you're gonna run into some problems the stack and foam in the forefoot did increase a little bit thus making a slightly lower heel to toe drop here and many have suggested that the a6 nova blast 2 is the more stable of the two shoes up to now you often find these on sale quite highly discounted at the moment i think i found them at bikester.co.uk seems like a legitimate site and these represent the first of the marshmallow shoes in my collection today in fact just getting these in hand again makes me want to go out and run in them right away shoe two sees me showing some love for the invincible run from nike a couple of viewers suggested that i gave this shoe a really hard time when i uh, reviewed it earlier in the year i think they're probably right actually i did enjoy lots of things about this shoe and i'm going to tell you about them today lots of my valued viewers love the marshmallow like midsole feel here in the invincible run flying it yes it's a big slab of zoom x a bit of a clog but it does have its advantages the zoom x here is more generously lavished on us than when the ambassador from the famous Ferrero Rocher adverts from the early 90s bought out those chocolate delicacies. Till night, with this Zoom X, you are really spoiling us. You can pick these up for about 123 Earth credits or less these days. Certainly a bit easier to stomach at that price. I think that's at the Nike website as well, so I think for such a huge marshmallow like Zoom X stack, worth a try. Why not? Nike specifically state that the stupendous use of their flagship foam here is to ease that heel to toe transition. I did find the upper a bit odd on this one, but I'm staying positive today. I think if you struggle with the more rigid or tough foams that are in some of the shoes recently, and those type of shoes restrict your running to shorter, lower distance efforts, then the Zoom X here in the Invincible run might be one you can test out. Certainly a utility shoe, this one. I'm not sure I'd want to use it on a daily basis. It's just far too much cushion there for me. But if you are looking for something to protect you from the impact of your favourite stretch of tarmac, I don't think you should look too far from this one. See, I can be nice about it. That's just huge, isn't it? I can't make this video without my saviour shoe, guys helping me to rise like a phoenix from the flames and get off the sofa like Saint Lazarus, albeit after two and a half weeks rather than four days. Hopefully you'll all understand what I'm on about there. The Adidas Adizero Primex is a real surprise of a shoe for me. I thought I was gonna hate it, but I really love it actually. 
a lot. It's certainly the most maximally cushioned shoe that I've ever had in my collection. It is quite frankly bonkers, bon bon bonkers. I mean, I'm sure there's some 70s platform shoes out there, perhaps previously owned by Mark Bolan or members of the suite or some ladies fashion models that will make you look a little bit taller, but they don't have that chewy light strike pro midsole. It's kind of like nougat, but for your foot rather than your mouth. With the addition of those crisp energy rods, and the bite of the blades underfoot. I think it's just forgiving to every single part of my body this shoe and supremely cushioned beyond everything that I've tried out thus far, without exception in fact. Although there is one part it's not forgiving on and that's your wallet. If you have some sort of major injury or something, I'm not telling you to go out and buy this shoe and it will make it all okay. That's simply not gonna help. If you're in tip top condition though, I think the Primax could do a job for you when you've had a very long work day, for example, and you just need to get out for a few miles. The head says yes, but the body says no. Again, this is a shoe that's only really gonna help people out with some stronger ankles and overpronators just don't come near it. But I think it can act as a superb pillow to make running possible again and enjoyable too. If you're on the comeback trail, maybe go for the Prime X. If you can find it, that is. You've actually gotta find it first to hire the Prime X. The last of my Max Squashy selections today is the vastly less wild and excitable New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 V11. There's quite a few discounts up on this shoe right now. I imagine they're probably prepping a version 12. Maybe it'll be a little bit different. I don't think people want it to be vastly different though. If you like this shoe, then you'll just want it to be the same every time. There's no new fangled p material here or TPU stuff with nitrogen in it. It's just good old fashioned EVA they used to do it back in the 40s. I say it's good old fashioned EVA, but there's an absolute mass of it here in the 1080 V11. That big slab underfoot doesn't half help to provide some protection from the ground. That harsh pavement and tarmac are just deadened off a little bit. It's kind of like wearing a pair of ear defenders, but on your feet. I think the lack of actual bounce in this foam could benefit some people. They don't want some sort of springy foam underfoot that's gonna send them rocketing off into the air like Zebedee. It's more of a dull absorption of each stride, really. Ideal for a recovery or perhaps some easier efforts. It always felt a little more in line with that type of usage rather than anything else for me. And as such, it completes my copious cushion list. This one's certainly one if you perhaps pronate a little more. Maybe your stride or form isn't the best. I think this one could work a little better for you than some of the others in today's list. So, do you own any of the shoes in today's list? Do you think I've lost my marbles, or is there one I've missed out here? I think they provide some ridiculous amounts of cushion, and I've certainly implemented all of them over the course of the last year when I really wanted to get out there and do some miles, but perhaps the body wasn't really that up for it. I think if I could choose only one of them, though, to keep in my rotation, just for those days when I really need an extra push out the door, it'd probably be the Primax. I just think it trumps all of the others in terms of that wild cushion. Let me know your thoughts and opinions, guys, down in the comments. A musical interlude today for you, this time from Burl Ives. I really love Holly Jolly Christmas. In fact, that was when the Christmas spirit kind of switch was flicked in my head. The other day I was grabbing a coffee on my way to work in the local garage and Holly Jolly Christmas came on, I thought, yeah. The vocal delivery here from Burl Ives is wonderful, very old school. He sounds nice and wholesome, this bloke. Hope he is, now I've said that. Really nice backing track as well to this one. Some nice acoustic guitar, a swinging vibe as well. What more do you want at Christmas, eh? Hey? I really like the little pre-chorus part of this as well, where he's talking about the mistletoe and sort of waiting to get a kiss from his sweetheart or something. I really like that. I like these old school Christmas songs. Not too many of them around these days. The last decent one I can remember was probably from the darkness, actually. That was back in the early noughties. What's happened, eh? They just keep knocking out these terrible ballads and everything. That's not what people want. They want something fun and it's going to... Make you feel that Christmas spirit like a log fire. You know, the smell of port, some cheese, and, uh, you know, leftover turkey sandwiches the next day. That's what we want. We don't want some pop idols singing a load of rubbish. It's just no subtlety to it. There's no sincerity to the songs. But sincerity is exactly what you get here with Burl Ives' Holly Jolly Christmas. Go and check it out, guys. Put it in your Christmas playlist. Go on. I'm going to pick one of these four shoes and go for a run in a moment. Nothing too crazy, just go out and do a few miles just to clear my head. Don't know which one I'm going to go for though. I might leave it up to Beast. 
Thanks for tuning in and sticking with me to the very end of today's video, guys. It is always appreciated. Remember, you can help the channel out by picking up some merchandise from the links below. But also, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications when we launch those new videos for you. It also helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up, like, and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.